Hi everyone, it's Kenneth Rivera again, and I wanted to film a video on how to clear karma with the coronavirus. And I'm gonna make videos on how to explain more of like some fundamentals and some of the more basic concepts, because this is kind of advanced for folks. But since these are interesting times, I thought, well, let's go for it. So first I'm gonna explain some of the frameworks that I use for working with karma. And if these frameworks don't work for you, don't use them and use other frameworks. Um, there's many traditions that believe that karma is set. I don't come from one of those traditions. A lot of the Buddhist lineages, which I have studied, have specific practices on how to work with karma directly. And some of these practices that I'm sharing, I are just coming from my own experience from my own kind of tinkering with these systems as well as a lot of support from a few other systems namely art geysers energetic neurolinguistic programming along with john friedlander's system called psychic psychology so for me the two principal ideas is one that karma has a function karma produces something and if we, to kind of cycle back a little bit, the definition that I use for karma, which is more of a working definition, is that karma is just causal energies, right? Karma isn't good or bad, it's simply neutral. And so if we use the example of, if I'm a jerk to everybody, eventually there's gonna be a time when even in this, you know, really quickly, in this lifetime where if I'm a jerk to everybody, people are gonna be jerks back to me. And for me, karma, when I tune into it, it really structures things. It structures things in our aura, it structures things in our subtle body, it structures things in our reality. And again, I'm kind of just going for it today. So if it doesn't make sense, you can pop a comment on here. You can request a different video. Yeah, but, so karma structures things and again because it's it's neutral it means that those structures can either guide towards things that are really positive and beneficial or towards things that are painful and um we could say just kind of suck and if we use that example and i kind of run with it a little bit more so if i continue to push people there'll be a day that people push me back and in that moment there's a choice and a part of that choice for me is that there's a choice to understand two things. One, that getting pushed sucks, <laughs> right? And that should increase our compassion, right? If I've pushed people and then somebody pushes me and I'm like, ow, that hurt, that sucked. I didn't feel like I did anything wrong. Wow. You know, I regret all of the people whom I pushed. That to me is logical. The next thing is we increase in wisdom. And what I mean by that is if, you know, I was a supervisor or I pushed people to try to get what I wanted, eventually we should see that pushing people just doesn't get things done. It simply doesn't work. And there's so many things in our lives that we do that don't actually produce the thing that we want. Uh, examples of this is like uh, people that struggle with any form of addiction, right? We might want peace, we might want happiness, we might, we might want to have fun or to be loved by others. And the addiction promises that, but can't actually deliver on that promise. And I kind of, the way I personally think about it, right, is like no matter, in, in various examples, right, no matter how good I get at this thing, when push comes to shove, it's gonna let me down. You know, so no matter how good you get at drinking or at going to parties, it's not a skill that's gonna hold its own for you. Similarly, no matter how good you get at watching TV or playing video games, when push comes to shove, that's a skill that will 100% let you down. <laughs> you know, my video game skills isn't gonna pop up one day and be like, can I got this job interview for you, let me take care of it. Or, you know, in the heat of a conflict to be like, what was that video game? And it was, uh, 
and it was like jab jab circle circle square that's right perfect now i i know how to handle this difficult situation no it's just a literally a, a waste of time unless of course i'm enjoying myself it's to de-stress and it's responsible i'm not saying that but to stay on this concept of karma karma is causal energy from the past which produces experiences in the future that create the opportunity to grow in our wisdom and in our compassion. That is the frame that I'm gonna use. And so, when we think about the particular karma of living in these times, that are some wild times, good times, but wild nonetheless, where we feel scared, possibly we feel unsafe, where many people are dying. And I'm talking about the coronavirus, but also if we just zoom out at the rest of the world and um, many countries are at war, there's many countries where people are starving to death, where there's refugee populations that are displaced and we can work with the karma, not only of ourselves, but we can work with the collective human kind of karmic momentum and what's up in this current cycle. So first, let's tune in and allow yourself to perceive what the coronavirus is. And let that dissolve because a lot of us have a lot of preconceptions about what it is let's let that dissolve and maybe let the coronavirus itself tell you what it is good and ask the coronavirus what would be skillful for you to clear and release from your system. So I like to imagine I put like a little fire in front of me and as I'm relating to the coronavirus, anything that would hook me to it, anything that is afraid, constricts, I honor, appreciate, care for, and then allow to release into that fire. Good. And now we're going to work with karma. So as the coronavirus energy is in front of us, how we're relating to it is in front of us, imagine that it kind of scooches closer to you and that helps you become aware of any karmic connections that you have to it. So examples of this could be to actually experience that in your life, in your body, or to have somebody close to you, a loved one, experience it, or to see it in our community. And just use your imagination, just let it happen. So let this image of the coronavirus kick up the karma in our field that connects us to it. And oftentimes it'll seem like, um, like little structures, tension in our field. Um, for a lot of folks, it's gonna be kind of like behind us of us or it'll be like layers in case that's helpful and either way even if you can't feel it or see it this process is going to help transform it and so what we're going to do is we're going to allow and give permission for those karmic imprints to sit in front of us and as we sit them in front of us we're going to once again hold them with really big love, 
compassion, and wisdom. And I like to let these karmic energies know directly that I'm deeply committed to growing. That I'm incredibly committed to growing in my wisdom and growing in my compassion. So there's no need for these cycles to continue because I'm willing to learn those lessons now in a really clean way. And as we relate to these karmic energies in that way, let's ask if that karma has any lessons to share with us. And as those lessons are being offered, just give them permission to upload into my conscious mind if that's appropriate. In more subtle aspects of ourselves, they get permission to receive then let's just really hold the rest of these energies with really big forgiveness. All the time I'm like, ah, you baby Ken. <laughs> I'm just like, what were you doing, buddy? <laughs> that wasn't responsible. And as that karmic energy begins to release, Let's give permission if any other energies want to release into the fire. Again, I'll have a video to go through the basics a little bit more, but we're gonna clear our grounding cords and bring up a brand new grounding cord. And this is to update the earth as we've updated our energy. We're going to recall our authentic energies. We're going to use a sparkly little golden star. And as our energies get recalled, they're going to get beamed in from the bottom of our feet to the top of our head. And then let's tune in again to see if there's any more imprints that are ready to release. And in my mind, I see them like little seeds. And I just imagine that they pop like little popcorn. I also really like popcorn, so maybe, maybe that's weird for folks. <laughs> but I do have friends that kind of will see them like little pictures. One of my teachers literally has them show up like pie. And then as these karmic energies begin to release, let's, let's release that image of the coronavirus that we initially brought. And let's ask for a brand new image to come up. And notice if the tension between you and this image of the coronavirus if it's diminished at all, it's gotten more, maybe you're more aware of it. And know as a practitioner that that tension lets me know that there's more work. And if there's more work, then there's more growth that's possible. So it's a good thing. It's pretty fun actually. And as such, if you feel confident, you can go for another layer. And if not, you can just really honor your system for being willing to grow and explore. And that's it for this video. Thank you.
Bye-bye.